technology today. All right. Hey everybody, it's Amy B. Thank you for joining me for another version of Agent Hacks. And today what we're gonna talk about is this concept of time management and um, the fact that time cannot be managed. If you like the title and the conversation, make sure you go down below and comment time management. All right, so here we go. What I've learned from time management is that time cannot be managed simply because we all have an equal fixed amount of time, which is 24 hours in a day. What can be managed, however, is the activities that happen during that time. And the best way to get clear on what activities need to happen in order to use your time most effectively is to really sit down and hash out what your big why is. Why are you working? Why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you spending time away from your family? And what are you hoping to get out of that? And then what are your priorities? So if your priorities are to sell a certain amount of homes a year, what do you have to do to get there? What do you have to do on a daily basis to make that happen? If your priority is to run a marathon, how do you begin eating an elephant or taking it one bite at a time so that at the end you can run 26 miles. What has to happen along the way to get you to that goal? And it's, you know, it's vitally important to have a plan for, for managing your time. So um, a really great book for time management is The One Thing written by Gary Keller. It's a fantastic book that shares if you focused on one thing and if you only did one thing and that one thing made sure that everything else had you set up and everything was fine, what would that one thing be? And you all know what your one thing is or what that one thing would equate to. And so my suggestion is to take that one thing, whatever that is that you have to do on a daily basis, day in, day out, and make that be your priority for the day. So if you're working a five hour or a five day week, Monday through Friday, and every single day you're doing something that is a priority for you, that should be a part of your protected time in that day. So for example, um, I did a book report on the 12 week year. And the 12 week year gives you suggestions for how you should spend your time in your day. And I have had so many phone calls with so many different real estate agents and or business owners. And the biggest struggle they have is they don't have enough time in the day to do the activities or to do the work that they need to do because they keep saying yes to things that aren't a priority. So, you know, my other really favorite book is Essentialism by, by Greg McEwen. And in this book, he talks about if you're saying yes to something, what are you saying no to? So, for example, if I say yes to a listing appointment every night this week, I'm saying no to my family every night this week. Think about what you're saying yes to and what you're going to say no to as a result, right? Very important. Every time you say yes, you need, to, you need to be critical about it and you need to really think, what is it that I am saying no to if I say yes to this? What's interesting is um, in my 12 week year, um, I'm doing it for the first time uh, for the first quarter of the year. And the only single one goal that I have for my first 12 week year is to have integrity with my schedule. That's it, to follow my schedule. And I wrote out my schedule and I realized that I needed more flex time in my schedule. I needed more white space to work on things that weren't planned or, you know, 
um, expected. But at the same time, I absolutely had to protect the time that was crucial that made sure that I was getting the key priorities in every day or week that needed to happen so that my business goals were met. And so really you, what you have to do is pick apart what are your priorities, what are your goals, and what are the things that you absolutely have to do to get there. For most of us, it's generate leads. And there's a million ways to generate leads. I choose to use the relationship-based model where I build my business by relationships. I'm 100% referral only. I still prospect. I still connect with my clients. I still have lunch with them. I still communicate with them, text message, call, have client events. All of those things are part of my prospecting time. So this is um, my weekly schedule. And it runs from 7.30 to actually 4 o'clock. Um, I have made a commitment to get my kids off the bus at 3.50 every day. That means that I have to start at 7.30 getting my work done. So what can I do between 7.30 and 4 o'clock that make me absolutely the most productive possible? Well, I start every single day across the top with 90 minutes of prospecting time. That's connecting with my clients, with people I know, um, just making connections. Now, what am I doing during that time? Well, here's an agent hack that you may not know. Turn off the sound on your damn phone. Turn off notifications on your computer. When you're doing the most important thing that you do every day, you should have complete commitment and focus to that thing. Because if that's your one thing, you should do it in the beginning of the day, have complete and utter focus on that one thing, and get it done so that you know that you've done your one thing that you have to do for the day that makes all of your business happen. For me, it's making those prospecting connections through a program that I use called 36 to Life. It's an amazing way to build your business based on referrals. I've been doing business based on referrals for 12 years, and my average sale price has been consistently at or around above 250, and we continue to do more sales each year. It's a solid process, and our business comes every year from that. So after the 90 minutes of prospecting time, I have a buffer time. And so this book, what this book tells you is, is there's four four parts of time that you have to do, right? So the four parts are, um, first of all, protected time. And that's, for me, that prospecting time or lead generating time in the, in the middle, in the beginning of the day. And I will not let anybody get in the way of that. That is the first thing I do before I do anything else, including check email or text messages or anything. That is my priority. Nothing gets in the way of that. Because if something gets in the way of that, then I have some lag time on filling my sales funnel to make sure that I'm getting the leads I need to make the sales I need and cash those checks, right? The second um, time block that 12 week year suggests is called buffer time. Now this is probably what most of you are doing all day long. Buffer time is answering text messages, checking email, following up on phone calls, those types of things. For me, that happens between 9 and 10 a.m., and then again from 3.30 to 4 o'clock to wind up the day. Close out your email during the day. It's not necessary. If somebody needs to talk to you, they will figure out a way to do it. And what I found is most of the time, if you let something sit for just a little bit, the other person will figure it out. They'll work it out, they don't need you, you're not the only one that can save the day, right? So just give me the benefit of the doubt and check your email twice a day. Follow up on things twice a day. Because if you let all that little buffer time minutia get into the rest of your day, you're never gonna prospect for leads, which makes you money, and you're never gonna get anything else done that are project-based things 
that are going to move your business forward, that are going to help you automate your business, that are going to help you scale and grow your business, right? You're never going to get that kind of stuff done. All right, so then the, the third block of time that you need to do is called project time. And I love this idea. I always have, you know, my big mantra is implement now, perfect later. And I always have these projects I want to do. I always have these things that I want to put into place, whether they're systems or projects or automations or um, different programs or an event I want to have, whatever they are. So every week for three hours, I have a dedicated project time on Tuesday afternoons today. I'm so excited. So those are my project times. Every Tuesday from 10 to 11, you're gonna see me on Facebook Live. That's my Facebook Live time every week at 10 a.m. on Tuesdays. You'll see it every week. And um, that's how you can hold me accountable to my schedule. That's all I got for, Monday, or for Tuesdays. Um, and then there's this next um, block of time, the fourth block of time, it's called like, revive time or personal time. And I block out personal time on my Friday afternoons for three hours. Now, my Fridays are generally flex days anyway, because I find that if I prioritize um, my priorities appropriately from Monday through Thursday, Friday is kind of a flex day for me. So I can fill that with real estate. I can fill that with selling my courses. I can fill that with doing some EXP agent um, attraction or coaching. Um, this Friday, I'm going to dot loop to do a little bit of training to their employees to let them know what a day in the life of a real estate agent is. Some days on Friday afternoon, I get my toes painted or I go to happy hour with one of my friends and just reconnect. It's me time. It's whatever I choose to do in that time. And it's really there to help you rejuvenate and really give yourself time. And that's during the daytime. You deserve that, and it's really important. It's like a little vacation for your brain. So those are the four time blocks, the protected time, the buffer time, the project time, and the revive time. And so when you look at my schedule here, um, you're going to see that I have a lot of white space in here. On Monday, I've got some on Tuesday, and this is all my project time. So my phone will be off during that time. I've got um, my courses are going to start running in uh, March and April, so those are blocked in. But for now, all that time is open. I've got time on Thursday afternoon. Um, Friday, this is me time, and um, I just do some prospecting on Saturday mornings uh, really easily via Facebook. So, again, nothing on the evenings or weekends. I've made it a practice to not schedule any appointments with clients on evenings or weekends. I found ways to move them over to the business day and the work week. Um, and that works really well for my schedule. Um, and my clients, when presented with the options, do really well with that. Um, a couple of other tips on time management. As they say, if it's not on your schedule, it doesn't exist. So make sure that all important things that are priorities are on your schedule. If it's a priority for you to get your skin checked because you might have skin cancer, which happened to me earlier this year, then you need to make it a priority and get it on your calendar. If it's a priority to get a mammogram, put it on your calendar. If it's a priority to have your kids um, asthma checked, that needs to be on your calendar. Um, if it's not on there, it doesn't exist. And too many of us let our, ourselves down or our families down by not prioritizing their needs. And this is a key, key point to time management. And there's no reason why we can't put these things in our schedule very purposefully so that we are intentional about that time. Another thing, I learned this at KW Family Reunion a couple of years ago. And what I learned is, is that in order to have a big business and a big life at the same time, or a great net life, again, you have to prioritize things. And, you know, 
there's a lot of significance for us as real estate agents with big egos in saving the day or being a hero or doing something for somebody else that makes them happy. But at the same time, we only have so much time in the day. So we have to protect our time and make sure that we're using that for things that are the most important for our priorities and for our clients' priorities. So one trick I learned that was hard for me is if you put something on your to-do list or on your schedule <coughs> and you don't do it after three times of attempting it, you need it's either not a priority and you need to just not focus on it because it's clearly not a priority or you need to leverage yourself and hire someone else to do that job. I'll be the first to admit, I absolutely hate reconciling my expenses and doing uh, my profit and loss statement. I, I wouldn't do it, but it's so important to business, to running a legitimate real estate business, to have a working profit and loss statement and be transparent about what your numbers are. So I hired someone to do that for me. I pay money every month for them to do that and help me with that. And that is money well spent because otherwise it wouldn't be getting done. And I would be unclear about what my money looks like and what I needed to do to work or not work or however that, however that would shake out. So at the end of the day, um, you know, you've got to be consistent with your schedule. First of all, you got to have a schedule. What is your schedule? Um, I teach courses. I'm writing a book this year. I still sell real estate. Um, I have a team and um, now part of EXP Realty and I have a EXP Realty family um, that I work with and grow. So I do a number of different things. Last year, I also started a startup and juggled all those things. And what I did was I made a day for each business or I credited the amount of time that I was spending on each business as a percentage of time I was spending. So if my real estate income was 50% of the income that I expected to bring in in 2017, I needed to spend 50% of my time on that business. If my courses were scheduled to make 25% of my income, then I needed to spend one day on those. So really think intentionally about what it is that you're expecting money to come from, prioritize those things in that way with your time, and then protect the hell out of the one thing that's going to get you the business that you need by the end of the year. So in closing, I know that a couple of people asked for the books that I mentioned. I mentioned The One Thing by Gary Keller. I don't have a copy of that book on me. The 12 week year, which I did a book report on a couple weeks ago, and you can look back through the videos and get a link to my book report. And Essentialism by Greg McGowan. This is my book of 2017. That is amazing. I'll put links to everything up in the comments. So <coughs> as I leave you today, I wanna read a passage from the 12 week year. And the 12 week year says on page 139, think about this. People earning a million dollars a year are not working 10 times harder than people earning $100,000 a year. In fact, they're sometimes working less, but they're working differently. So the take home on this is to get different results from your efforts, you have to do things differently and do different things. So that's why I've restructured my schedule and my only goal of the first 12 weeks is to have integrity with my schedule. So thank you guys so much for listening. I hope that this time management talk was helpful. If you have any questions, post them in the comments. Feel free to share this and enjoy your agent hacks. Have a great day. Thanks again.